I have a Mini 3 Pro and the Air 3. So why on earth would I go out and buy the new Mini 4 Pro? Well, I do have my reasons. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and yes, here is another drone to add to my collection. Why did I buy it? Well, I don't know. I treated it like a bit of a car, I guess. So uh, sometimes if you love a car, you see this year's model has got a few extra toys like, I don't know, adaptive cruise control or automatic heated seats. Sometimes you just want to keep up to date and have the very best model out there. And frankly, that was my approach to this. This year's version of the Mini Pro range from DJI, the Mini 4 Pro, is basically the same chassis as last year's model, but it has got a fair few extra features that actually make it more like a sub 250 gram version of my very recent uh, purchase of the Air 3. And so I bought it. I chose the very cheapest option available because I already have spare remotes. And of course I have the new RC2 remote that came with the Air 3. So the basic package for the 4 Pro with the N2 remote was just £689 or what's that, $759. Now, of course, at that price, you don't get the carry case, of which I have loads, and you don't get any spare batteries, of which I have loads. And because although the Mini 4 comes with a slightly different battery, you can still use Mini 3 batteries in the Mini 4. You can also use the same Plus battery in it as well. So for me, no need to get the combo version at all. So this is it. Mostly the same body, but with a gimbal clamp very similar to the new Air 3. And of course, uh, these, these two new, let me take the gimbal guard off. You've got these two new sensors, which are the basically uh, the big change for the Mini 4 Pro. It now gives full obstacle avoidance going pretty much in all directions, which is going to be brilliant, I think, when doing quick shots or active track. And on that, that is actually one of the big upgrades. It's the new 360 degree active track where you can specify exactly where you want the drone to be in relation to you and actually have it move to that position relative to you as it changes, uh, as it's flying along. So you're gonna get really dynamic, good shots as you walk along, which I think is just brilliant. I don't know. Otherwise, camera sensor is the same, but the brains behind it are a little bit upgraded. Uh, you've got uh, full 4K slow-mo now, 100 frames per second, and even the ultra slow-mo of 200 frames per second at 1080 resolution. So again, brilliant, and it is mirroring the Air 3's capabilities. It's also got a full 10-bit uh, D-Log M color mode, and it's also got a night mode for way, way better nighttime shots, and of course, OcuSync 4, 20 kilometer range or 10Ks in non-FCC areas, but that's using the new N2 remote control or the RC2 remote control. Speed-wise, uh, it's the same as the Mini 3 Pro, max speed 16 meters per second versus the Air 3 is much faster, 21 meters per second. And as said, flight times are gonna be pretty much the same as the Mini 3 Pro as well. Um, I think the Mini, this, the Mini 4 Pro was actually first released in Europe with 120 meter max height, but I believe that's just been lifted in the latest uh, update. Although in truth, you can only make use of that if you're flying up hills as uh, pretty much it's illegal to fly over 120 meters or 400 feet in most countries. Look, anyway, enough talk, lovely sunny day. Let's get it powered up, updated and up in the air. Okay, stickers off, battery fully charged. And um, I've also paired it to the RC2 remote that I had with my Air 3. I did a little video on that earlier uh, on how to actually pair it up and make use of that if you've got um, an RC2 remote already, if you already bought the Air 3. At the moment, the uh, Mini 4 Pro is not compatible with the RC remote that came with the Mini 3. I'm not sure if DJI are gonna kind of update that to enable that. You wouldn't get OcuSync 4, you'd get OcuSync 3, lower transmission system, but it'd still be pretty good. I hope they do because a lot of people have the original RC remote and it is a really useful little remote. It can, uh, works with the Air 2S, so let's hope they get that sorted. So as I said, right, I've paired the two up now and uh, as I said, do a little uh, link to that video there for you. Um, like I said, incredibly similar, same chassis as the Mini 3 Pro. Uh, you've got the two new obstacle avoidances uh, sensors there, but otherwise, looking around, it is pretty much identical. Battery, I'm using the battery that came with the Mini 4 Pro. It's a couple of grams lighter than the Mini 3 Pro batteries. So technically, if you use your Mini 3 batteries in this, uh, you're gonna be a couple of grams over that magic 250 gram limit but one nice thing i do have a couple of plus batteries and they will work in this absolutely fine as well 
It's actually one thing I did notice very different, which is a huge improvement, I think, little legs. You have legs on the front now, so you're no longer balancing just on the center. Um, I think the addition of these front legs does make it a little bit better and lift it up when landing on grass. So that is another little difference there. Very good. Right, let us go back to how we are. Now, first thing, he's not coming back to me because he's got rear obstacle avoidance. Is it me or is he quieter? It just sounds so gentle. Um, I have the Mini 3 here, so without further ado, let's do a little sound test first of all. Move him over there. He does seem quieter. I'm not talking about the pitch, I'm just thinking he sounds quieter. It's quite a brisk breeze today. That's not going to worry me. I know that the Mini 3 Pro can handle strong winds. Um, he's bouncing around a little bit, but um, he seems to be holding his own. Right, let's quickly put that down. There's a definite difference, slight difference in pitch, and to me, a slight difference in the actual uh, loudness, volume as well. What I'll do is move them apart, take off the mic and hold it. Very slight difference. Um, quieter is always good, I think. So, Mini 3 Pro wasn't that loud. Mini 4, ever so slightly quieter, I think, in my humble opinion. Right, let's land the uh, Mini 3 so I don't get told off by the CAA for trying to fly two drones at the same time, because that's the sort of thing they would get annoyed at. Okay, without further ado, off we go. Let's see how he flies. Normal mode, up we go. So to purpose of today, put him through just his general paces really. I mean, I'm not going to do a full, full, every function view. We have got the full waypoints I can see here. So that's a nice little addition for, uh, for such a small little drone. Uh, I'm not going to go into that now because like that's a bit of a major thing by itself. Yeah, okay. Uh, so what we will do though. Just go over, so I've got to, got to do some adjustments on the old uh, settings there, so I can very quickly do that now. Uh, down in the, gain an expo. Turn you on a bit slower. And uh, yeah, a bit more tilt smoothness. Right, let's, uh, off we go. Take some nice, oh, it's very, very crisp. Beautiful pictures, but really, as I said, same sensor, same camera as uh, the Mini 3 Pro. So I'm not really going to be expecting much in the way of uh, anything too different. So I've just worked out one difference that I'm seeing uh, when you turn around the image that you're seeing on the um, RC2 remote is more similar to when you're watching a video at 60 frames per second. Very, very high frame rate, very, very smooth, no judders at all, no motion blur. But with regards to what you're seeing on screen, really crisp, really bright, crisp, and very, very smooth. No signal breaking down at the moment. I turn it around and go up. I'm recording this. Hopefully you'll see what I mean. Uh, very, very smooth. Lovely patterns they've got on the field at the moment. That's very cool. I'll take a little picture of that, I think. Right. 
I'm going to get a little bit closer to me. Come back. Yeah, very, very smooth. When you're moving the gimbal up and down, when you're rotating, the video on here is very, very smooth, much smoother than the Mini 3 Pro. Um, that's a nice improvement. Happy with that. You've also got that home point there. You saw that on the Avata and the um, FPV, so it always tells you where the home point is. If you, if I turn around like that, you can see on the left of the screen, it tells you where where you need to turn to in case you've got yourself a bit disorientated. Which of course you won't do because you're always flying close enough to know which way your drone is pointing. So we've obviously got the obstacle avoidance ticking away, clicking away. I've got two very, very laid back dogs. A bit bored with it all to be honest, aren't they? So of course, one of the main reasons I did choose to buy the Mini 4 Pro was this uh, new fantastic uh, focus tracking, active track that you've got, uh, similar to the other higher mo end models. Now when you go in, you can change the focus track settings. You're not just stuck with it either trailing behind you or at the side, you can actually tell it where it should be in position to, relative to you. You've got an inner circle and an outer circle where you set the radius of where you want the drone to be. And you can even tap and drag to make the drone move relative positions whilst you're walking along. So let's actually just have a go. Move him back a little bit. Sorry, Ted, didn't mean to tread on you. So I've, made, I've already set him there, he's going to turn around. Oh, look at that, isn't that brilliant? And as I walk along, oh, he hits, he sees the tree, that's good. So the sidewards obstacle avoidance is working fine. <laughs> oh, stop, stop, stop. Okay, so inadvertently I am testing the obstacle avoidance here, going through a lot of trees. Right, okay. I probably tested the obstacle avoidance a little bit more than I wanted to there. I'm going to pan round. He uh, managed to navigate through those bushes, those trees very nicely. Um, he missed it all. Uh, I mean, really, that is brilliant. He was flying backwards, sideways. Uh, there were overhanging branches above him and he missed it all. So very good. Oh, okay. Low battery already because I'm not on a plus battery. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? All right, let's let him bring him back in then. So now you've got the new return to home. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Showing you highlighted path where it's coming along. Now it's going to come down. Okay, lovely. I always have uh, good fun when I've got a brand new model drone. Um, it's no secret how much I love the Mini 3 Pro. It really is one of my favorite drones. The best camera is the one that's always with you and the Mini 3 Pro was the drone that you could carry in your backpack and you were generally permitted to fly almost anywhere. Um, Mini 4 Pro is gonna be a brilliant, lovely new upgrade to that drone, uh, just as capable in the wind. But having the new active track and having the all round obstacle avoidance, you may have seen uh, the fun I had when I was trying to get a house shot and ended up flying into that silver birch tree up there. Uh, four hours it took me to get the drone down because the little twigs had got wrapped around the propellers and I had to chop down half the tree. Um, so the sideways uh, obstacle avoidance clearly works after that little test there. So 
first impressions, very, very happy with it as well. Um, like I said, strength-wise, body-wise, chassis, camera, all the same. But it's nice to have these extra additional functions and um, nice to have the extra obstacle avoidance. Anyway, look, you can see it's a lovely sunny day. I want to try and get this video out as quick as possible. Um, busy, busy times at the moment. Uh, you may have seen from that little clip, awful lot of things seem to be packed up. Um, I'll do another little announcement on that. But uh, my time here in rural North Essex is actually uh, coming to an end. But look, that's a video for another day. For now, very, very happy uh, with the Mini 4 Pro. Glad I've got it as an upgrade. Glad I got it as quite a cheap upgrade, 680 pounds. Okay, it's a fair bit of money, but at least that's actually quite a reasonable figure to pay for a brand new drone and have it used with uh, my existing Air 3 remote, the RC remote. Video quality, fantastic. That's a real difference. Obstacle avoidance, real difference. And the new active track, fantastic fun. And having even started trying to play around with slow-mo or anything else. So, happy boy as ever. Give the little video a little thumbs up for me. Always helps things along. Until next time, have fun. Happy flying.